obviously means so much to you. What are your emotions right now? Yes. Okay. Um, sorry for the language there. Uh, what is not clicking for you behind the wheel at the moment? Uh, and how does this change your mindset for the weekend? Is it now a test session? Are you going to go for it in the sprint? You know what? Qatar actually provided, especially for qualifying. Now, we have a little bit of drama going on between Fernando Alonso and Lando Norris, and this was before qualifying even happened. But now, with Lando actually being P10, his lap not counting, Alonso being P5, let's talk about qualifying, what to expect on the race, and a couple of shock surprises here in Qatar. Qatar gets a lot of bad rep, I think, because it's a very thin track there's not going to be a lot of overtaking in this track but i gotta say under that little golden hour seeing these cars fly around like that it was pretty nice to look at i can't lie that also with a couple of shocks aston martin really surprised me here the car was super stable and i have my reasonings why lando should have been p2 and i mean he should have been p2 by a mile maybe even catching up to Max Verstappen's time before, without obviously actually going for a second lap. I think if Max put in a second lap, he would have been another three tenths up on probably the one that he had originally. The track in the beginning was very favorable for drivers that are very good in trick conditions. Hence why Fernando, hence why Lewis Hamilton, Max, all those drivers were very favored on this. And they were doing very well, even in practice sessions, and also the Aston Martin was actually looking a lot better. I didn't expect them to come in to actually get a P5 now. That's huge for the team considering where they've been. Puts them in a good spot for Fernando catch points. I mean, Lance. Dude. I, like, I got a feel for him, honestly. I feel for him and Pettis. It just seems like these guys are out of tune this year. We always get, in every season, like one or two drivers that are just completely out of sync from every other driver on the grid. Logan actually was decent. Got to give my props. Logan was only a tenth off of Albon. He even said he left a little bit in high speed, which you don't really say that. You say you put in your max. But it's good that he realizes his mistakes. That's already a step for Logan. Good job. Got to commend them. No crashing. Did well. Got to give him props, you know. Lance out in Q1 while the car is qualifying in Q3 comfortably with a very pacey car. I mean, he actually punched the wall too. So, yeah, Lance is... Not in the happiest of moods as well. So, oh man, Lancey Lance. It's tough. It's tough to watch a driver that I, listen, might be a controversial opinion, but I feel like Lance actually has high potential in this sport. He's shown it multiple times over. He is a decent driver. This has been an awful year. It's kind of like with Pettis. Like, do you really think Pettis is this bad? Do you think Pettis is a second down to Verstappen? It's just like uncomfortable years mixed with probably a car that doesn't favor him. Maybe Lance is an oversteer driver. I don't really like know what his preferences are. It's just a tricky year for the both of them. For Lance, I mean, it can't continue. Like, he's losing his father millions and millions. I get he's your son, but listen, my son was in that car. I'd have to tell him, scooch, buddy. Like, we got to put somebody else in this car. I'm losing, like, 30 million because of you. And maybe, hey, with the WEC project now coming or coming along, which, by the way, that Valkyrie, oh, chef's kiss, the thing is beautiful. What a car. And that's going to be in Le Mans? Sign me up. I'm definitely going to be watching it. I'm going to watch Le Mans anyways, but I got a new team to root for in Le Mans. I was rooting for Ferrari. They won. Now I get to root for Aston Martin, which is fun to actually see this turn into a hypercar and how they're going to make it into this Le Mans. I want to see the car. I might even do a review of a little techie stuff on the car. Regardless, we go into Q2. That is where Pettis falls out. And, man, he got his lap time deleted, but his lap even before that, and the lap that he put in was slower than the first lap Alonso put in. Now, put that into perspective. Alonso screwed up his second lap, didn't have any lap time, so other drivers should have been definitely passing Alonso. Signs, you know what? The guy's been, like, the go of the second half of the season. Yeah, Japan was kind of whatever, but, I mean, Monza, Singapore, Zanvor, the guy was flying. It was bound that he was going to get one bad qualifying and the car just kind of seems a little bit out of tune. Leclerc couldn't even hook it up and get past the Astons, which it, tell, it tells you something, right? It tells you something. But regardless of that, though, Q2, Pettis falling out. Sad to see, yet again, such a good driver, losing his tone with the car and just all sense of feeling with it. I don't think he's going to be able to recover to any good points-paying position. I think in the sprint he's going to struggle. I think the same with Lando, talking about Q3. Now, Lando was 
bag in purples the whole entire session. I mean, purple after purple after purple, and he does that. Now, unfortunately, he had an oversteer moment, meaning that the car is a little flimsy. We got to be careful on the tires here for McLaren. Regardless, the car is quick, man. You got to give him props. There's shots. I'll try and pull up a picture of where the car is just so damn low. I mean, like, good job. They are really improving upon what Red Bull, the formula Red Bull has already given them. So good job and props to McLaren for just lowering that car and getting it into a good window. They're a team to look out for, seriously. Oscar, congrats to him, a beautiful P3 on a track that he's never raced on. George out qualifying Hamilton. Let's see if he can keep it up in the race. I don't think so, but let's check it out. I think that Lewis is going to pass him again. Maybe we get another scuffle. But George, do us a favor. Pull off one of your favorite signature moves into turn one, into the side pot of Verstappen. That would be beautiful for our race. Qatar could be very fun then. We could see Oscar Piastri win. Lewis, get a win after a long time. George, do us a favor. Everybody would love you after this. You've been pretty in a pretty si sticky situation talking about 2023. Alonso, great lap. Leclerc put in the best lap that he could. Impressive for Bottas. Bottas in Q3 with that alpha. But yet again... This whole weird little drama thing kind of going on with uh, Lando and Fernando. Let's talk about it. Lando Norris gets angry with Fernando Alonso. He always makes himself look good or he makes others look bad. And the quote that he's talking about is Fernando literally said in the media that they're a little bit overconfident with how they are with their car. And from track to track, strengths and weaknesses go up and down. And I mean, I agree to it. Yes, the McLaren has been the strongest second car, but it does go up and down. He is a little, he is trying to pick at the nerves of McLaren for sure. I mean, he's Fernando. That's kind of his signature thing. So like, I find it funny. I get it. And Lando is quick to jump on something. You know how Lando is. He's very on edge when he wants to hop on stuff. So, I mean, I get it. From Lando's side, I get what he's saying. Fernando does love to point the blame into other directions. But from Fernando's side, he makes a valid point. It's not really something. I don't know why... I think Lando made it a little bit more exaggerated than I need it to be. I mean, like, it's not really like a bad quote, right? To me, that doesn't seem like anything bad. But Lando has to say something about that and always trying to make himself look good. So it's a bit of a little bit of a scuffle. Let's see what happens in the race because Lando might catch the Aston Martin, even though the Aston Martin looks very promising here. I don't think a podium is possible. That would be very impressive. They can get a podium on a track that everybody counted them out in. They're super strong in sectors one and three. So keep in mind, for the race, they're going to be a pretty strong car in the DRS. Like, they're fast down the straights. They've improved something. As I said in the beginning of the video, what did they find here? They found that, and I've been talking about this for Aston as well, if they don't have to compromise the car and if they can go full downforce or less, complete less downforce, they're a good car. But if they have to make a compromise, they can't find that setup in the car. It seems to be a little bit out of tune, kind of like the W13 of last year. You give it a little bit of downforce, like a max setup here where you have to go fully on the wing, front wing and rear wing. And the Aston car is performing fast and straight. It's really the beginning of the second half of the season. So props to them. It should be exciting. Merck looked pretty good here in race conditions. I They shocked me. I actually was a bit nervous after FB1, but they're in a good spot. Red Bull is still a bit oversteery. They do got a little bit of stuff to worry about, but they're going to be the fastest car. Unless Russell pulls a signature move, we can expect that Red Bull to be fastest. Not fastest in the third sector, like Aston Martin, though. Love to hear your thoughts down below. Please give me all your comments. You know I respond to them. You know I see them. You know we talk. Thank you guys for the support. Please leave a like, subscribe. It means the world. And peace.